Hey guys, in this video we're going to cover off on um, the undercarriage. I've fitted some wheels, uh, fitted some wheels, nose landing gear, seats, a bit of carbon, um, carbon fibre, and the firewall and painted the forward fuselage. So I hope you enjoy this one. Alright, just finished um, spray painting some parts. I painted the seat pans. Uh, what else did we paint? Uh, just all the little brackets, the rudder pedals, the rudder hinges, which aren't attached yet. Um, yeah, just touching up some parts. So it's a nice day. Sun is shining outside there, so I took the opportunity just to spray some parts, just with my little, um, what have I got here? I've just been using my little, little touch-up gun. Um, played around with the compressor, but got that working fine. So going well. So here's my parts in waiting, uh, seat back brackets, I pulled the rudder pedals out, engine mounts, they're powder coated, ready to go in, rudder, uh, sorry, the brake master cylinders, a couple of brackets I need to make up, centre console, that'll be vinyl wrapped, uh, made up the, um, these will be the uh, undercarriage brackets, like bolt the undercarriage on, it's just an L angle, primed, ready to go, they'll be white. I paint those white, rudder pedals uh, ready to, once the paint's dry and the rest of the stuff, which I'll show you, be good. Alright, I put up a put up a little garden shed down the back of the house here. Um, I haven't moved anything into it yet, and it's the middle of winter here in Victoria, so it's a great little hot box. I'll show you in here. So I've got my Whew, a bit fumy. Side console is painted, uh, seat pan painted, and then I've got uh, the old clothes dryer out of the laundry, rudder pedals, and hinges and brackets hanging on there. Get it, get out of there, it's a bit fumy. So, anyway, that's working well for me um, because the temperature, it's like one o'clock in the afternoon now. Um, it's only about 12 degrees. I put those parts in front of the heater and I ran the um, warm the paint up a bit just in some hot water for, prior to putting it on. So that's the best I can do in these conditions. Obviously I wouldn't paint the aeroplane but for all those fiddly bits it's working out well. Going well. Just on painting I've just got the um, like super cheap auto two horsepower compressor under the box there. I made that box out of MDF. It's like my snuffle box. Um, however, when it comes time to paint, uh, the compressor overheats pretty quick because you're using so much air. So I keep the jobs to a limit. Yes, I could just take the box off and let the um, let the compressor air cool a bit. Also, I, um, I fitted a regulator around the back there. A little tip with the regulator. It took me a while to work out, but I had I had the in and out. It's got an arrow on it. Well, guess who had it going the wrong way? So I was struggling for a while there. I've been riveting, riveted all the wings and everything, thinking, geez, I'm using a lot of air. But I was using 100 PSI. You could probably crank that down to about 40 PSI, I guess. Um, and then your air tank would last a lot longer. But going well. So yeah, just with the air pressure, I support myself a bit, bought the two guns. Um, this one's a small teflon -y type one. Use that for the A4s. This one, the bigger one for the A5s. Not that it makes much difference, but it just means I don't have to um, unscrew the tip each time, which is not really a, a big job. And then on the um, the hand riveter, which sometimes sometimes of a night, if I've just got a um, if I've just got a row of rivets, rather than arc up the compressor and everything, I just pull them with the hand riveter. Pretty quick and easy. About three pulls with this, and it's done. So. Don't be afraid, I guess, to wind the pressure, the temptations to wind the pressure on the compressor right up. All you're doing is using, you're just using more air. Um, and it's just, it doesn't affect, doesn't affect the pull of the rivet, like the set of the rivet. Just, I guess it's just a second or a millisecond longer to actually pull it. So, save all your air. And got a delivery today, just a knock on the door then. So I got my um got my anchor nuts, like the, the what it's single sided or whatever, um, for in the corners. So they'll go in soon, then tonight probably. And then my dimpler, I was gonna go 
I don't want to borrow any stuff. There's a few guys out the airport have a dimpler. But I found these, it's just a, um, you use your hand riveter, and that's literally a, literally a nail in there. Um, and you pull, so that's the dimple die. Get it in the camera. So that's a dimple die, which is pulled by the hand riveter. Uh, 20 bucks. So we'll see how that goes. A little bit more uh, mucking around, I guess, but for what I'm doing, for amateur home builder, I reckon that's a bargain. So I'm going to use that on my center console um, and all the access panels going well. Okay, just putting the um, putting the anchor nuts into the center console. I'm using my little um, this a little cheap piece, I guess, the little dimple die. But you put that um, you put that through. Um, this one goes on top, and then you just pull it, pull it like a rivet. Um, so, relatively cheap and easy way to get out of it, rather than buy the big crimping pliers. Um, I skimped a bit there, but it seems to be working well. Um, I do need to. I've got a 10:32 tap, so I just need to show these, uh, show some of the anchor nuts who's boss, um, and run the 10:32 tap. Um, obviously not. I'm not going right the way through because then it just becomes a, a thread. Um, sort of take it through till the point, about a quarter inch, poking through the other side just to maintain that locking medium. But going well. And just one other thing, so I've dimpled the um, dimpled the skin uh, with the supplied anchor nuts. I mucked around there for a while, trying to um, trying to dimple the actual anchor nut. Um, I bought these other one-sided fellas for like there. Um, they come pre-dimpled. These ones aren't dimpled. But it's a bit of a case of, you know, it's a bit of a waste of time. The anchor nut's only on there just to do its do its job once pretty much. Once or twice every 25 hours. Um, also the little 330 second rivets, there's a heap supplied with the kit, but they're um, they're domies not countersunk but guess what I'm using them anyway into a countersunk or into a dimple and then I'm just um, I just clean it off with a file uh, just just take the take the heads off and it flushes up quite nicely it's not perfect but I'm using um, using what I've got and going well all right a bit of painting just got the mask off I uh, got the shed door open get a bit of airflow in here um, I've, uh, well, I had the paint open. I just um, just touched up the the heads of the heads of the bolts and the rivets just with a brush. I just used a um, just used a little touch up brush. A bit pedantic, but looks a bit better. And sprayed the um, the gear channel. It's also a good time to practice just with my spray gun technique, I guess. Looks all right, considering it's basically vertically above me. Um, now, when that dries, I'll be able to put the undercarriage in, obviously. And I also sprayed the uh, the undercarriage brackets, the bolt on there. They're down the back shed. Um, yeah, good to get that done. It stinks a bit, so won't be much building tonight. Um, I did have one little bit of oil canning, or what do you call it, orange peel there. Obviously left some grease on there. But good spot to sort of learn my skills um, because I'll make sure this is a bit cleaner before I um, prime that. So I might just mask this off tonight. Depends how smelly it is in the shed here. All right, a little bit of flitz on the rag in the drill. Put the rivet in the drill, and uh, they polish up nicely. I'll show you why in a minute. And one brake pedal with my three uh, polished up rivets. Going well. Alright, masks off again. Uh, sheds open. I've just um, just put up a first coat of colour on the aeroplane if you like. Um, in the middle there. Or the forward fuselage. Have a look at this. Pretty, um, pretty stoked to be honest. 
it's uh, I was after a um, that'll do type of finish and it's come on gone on pretty well the main view I guess is going to be you know you'll be sitting up here looking down at your feet bear in mind there's a dashboard here um, and there's going to be carpet in there a center console but the paint went on pretty well Uh, myself and paint pretty much don't get along every time I set up for it you know you set it up nice and neat you know what's going to happen you're going to, and what happens next um, spill the paint spill the turps I um, I had it half painted I thought I'd better just check how much paint I got left in the gun I was admiring my work thinking well this is going on really nice I lowered the pressure down Shh, nice um, uh, you know three inch uh, 70 mil something like that um, spray pattern going on well undo the cup just to check what happens <laughs> big um, tennis ball sized blob of paint lucky it was in the foot well where I hadn't painted mop that up quickly uh, got away with it by the look of it I got a little bit of dust from the rag and that but um, <sighs> should be right mate um, pretty happy if I got that result I would have taken that from the start so um, yeah that's all gone on well I have to let that dry for uh, probably a week I reckon um, it's 15 degrees today I've been waiting for the temperature to get up I'm not going to paint the whole aircraft in here but just get the interior done then I can move on so I've got the rudder pedals I may have showed you this last night got the rudder pedals done with the brakes on there they're looking good and all this stuff's waiting to go in um, so at this stage it's pretty, pretty slow and steady just paint, let it dry be, try and be patient. Um, I've got some things there I can do. Fix up the nose wheel, grease the nose wheel. Uh, the main landing gear is still away at the um, powder coaters. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty wrapped with that. And just let it dry, don't touch it, and I'll try not to spill anything else. Out here, all keen to get stuff done while the fuselage dries. Got a few jobs lined up. But everything's pretty much waiting uh, I'm just doing little jobs I might try and cut those on the scroll saw the undercarriage uh, soft pads and just going to lay some carbon fibre give it a try on this back console part that's the um, shelf that goes down the back there but we'll lay up the carbon and see how it looks And there is a beautiful Mike Patey carbon part. If that was Mike Patey, what he'd whack that together, make a mould, do it all in two hours. He's a bit of a master. Whack it under the heat lamps, but I've just put a sticker on and uh, I'm more than happy with that. One little trick from my error modelling um, experience, I guess I would, I'm going to go through with the soldering iron. Um, zap all the holes which makes them nice and neat also seals the edge but it's also like on little um, little corners like that if you run the soldering iron over it it actually um, it just welds down the uh, like the, the dog ears hopefully to stop the film coming up but I might even sit that in my car drive around with it just to see how the sun the UV affects it because nice fitting it to the aeroplane it all bubbles up in the Aussie Sun when it does Get back to summer, but um, that is beautiful. And the main landing gear rubber blocks just cut out. I just cut those out. Use my um, over there. I use my scroll saw, and then I just finished it off with that little drum drum bit in the Dremel. Turned out well. So these um, these fit rather snugly in there. Perfect. Going well. And brake pedals, rudder pedals, steering rods, all back in. 
the final time hopefully. Now I've greased up the bearing. I've uh, split pinned the bottom where the access is easy. I might put the um, tube on. I've got that uh, banjo or that coupling in with um, 567 Loctite. Split pin on the bottom, the adjustment at the top and the jam nut and the split pin. They'll have to be adjusted once I um, once I level up the rudder pedals. Got the uh, why it was easy to get at. There's no adjustment this end so that's on. I've put Teflon washers in there just to give it a nice bearing surface. I don't know if you can see but I've put Teflon wash washer each side of the brake and this side just where I was out a bit I've got two on one side and then on that side and one on each of that side up there of the Teflon washers um, but everything is uh, I won't move it too much because me being impatient the paint's still a little bit soft I only painted it yesterday um, it's touch dry but it's not cured so going well brakes are working or compressing and um, brake pedals are nice and smooth with a block in the middle might uh, take some masking tape off it's almost time to put the firewall in however the paint's still a bit soft so my plan is, same as I did the rear fuselage I might stick a matchstick or something um, just to separate the skin here from these, uh, these uh, stringers or wanderons um, yeah, if I put a bit of ply or something the old paddle pop stick just to hold it out while I, while I offer up the um, firewall again and I've just had a call, my landing, main landing gear is ready to pick up from the powder coaters so she might be on a wheel soon I'm finding these Teflon washers just from the hardware store to come in handy they're a quarter inch to upsize them to 5 16 which I needed just for the rudder pedals I simply, um, I just used Sino and I actually glued it to a bit of plywood and then drilled the hole and because the glue, super glue doesn't really stick to the Teflon um, just flicked it off so that worked well with these little washers little Teflon jobbies um, I'm sort of using them everywhere I think it's good I an undercarriage back from the powder coaters look at that, beautiful powder coating, wonderful stuff I'm just putting the seats together just one thing, so I followed the plan but these three rivets here really need to be uh, countersunk to allow the seat I'll put it together and show you alright so with the seat back and it's meant to be able to fold forward and then it hits those rivet heads yeah it works but it can be better and then that'll change when you put a clevis pin or drill a, I'm going to drill a hole and put a split pin through there with a washer but you can see it's sitting on the rivet heads so we need six, we need about 12 countersunk stainless steel rivets, 4mm. Alright, axle installed with the brake. Brake line will go on the top here on the quick disconnect. Uh, bleed point at the bottom. Uh, I think to remember, I guess, if you get a flat tyre, it's probably going to sit on that. Maybe the rim will support it. Um, these bolts are trapped inside unless you pull the brake apart. So I've gone with two washers at the back just to get it so it's not thread bound and then a thin washer at the front with the, the bolts that can be removed probably needs a dish, an extra dash length but I just put a thin washer on the front and two washers on the back and got the um, got the brake so it slides nicely on the um, on the guide rods and the other side all in and looking sweet and grease up the bearings, the gloves, the bearings, and the grease. Then we'll put the wheels on. So we've got the wheels on, on the undercarriage that was picked up this afternoon. Um, they're all on. I've got a split pin in there, just I'm keeping track of everything, all the important jobs. Um, probably have to take that out to put a spat on later on. The brakes are on. They're um, looking good. And put the nose wheel together as well. With the nose strut with the wheel assembly. Going well. 
All right, so I fixed the um, seats up, drilling out the stainless rivets. Um, obviously, it wasn't that uh, flash. Um, apologies to Zenith. You know, I was complaining I should have countersunk them, but I actually used the um, Zenith tip on these, which make, makes a uh, like a dimpled type mushroom head rivet. So I put the flat rivet on, rivet piece in the gun, you know, the tip in the gun, and that's um, that's flattened these three out nice enough so I don't have to go to the trouble of countersinking those holes. So if I hadn't done it, I thought about it prior, so now the seat comes up, um, it goes over the rivet heads, but then it sort of locks into position, so that's quite nice. Uh, enjoying that, so going well. Alright guys, thanks for watching. We'll wrap that one up there. We'll do a quick whip round if you like, see where I'm up to. I'll try and keep, keep these videos a bit shorter this time because, I don't know, the carrier pigeon must be having trouble or something because it takes, seems to take me forever to upload to YouTube, so I'll keep them short and sharp. Um, but this is where we're up to. Have a look at this. So forward fuselage, painted. Um, sort of a bit soft still, but it is winter down here. Not really in a heated shed. Brake cylinders are in. Um, the way these work, that's your reservoir on top, and it's just vented to atmosphere at the top there. So my plan would be to fill it from the um, caliper all the way up, push it up till the fluid comes out. But uh, brakes are in. That's split pinned at the bottom. I've got my nylon washers in there. Uh, nylon washers at the top. No split pin on the top because I've got to do the uh, the adjustment. I'm just keeping track of everything. Um, I've got a little bright orange book here. Um, all the critical, all the critical parts that I have to make sure that I do up prior to flight and adjust. Um, obviously, the brake pedals will need to be um, leveled up. That'll come once the rudder pedal, sorry, the rudder cables are in. So no split pins at the top, but got everything sitting in there. While the firewall was off, put in my steering rods. The center block is bolted in, um, and these rods I'll just. Um, Obviously they'll go through the firewall as I offer the firewall up. So yeah, looking good. Bit of grease. Um, I was a bit concerned about just the steel rod going through an aluminium L angle, no bearing. Um, so put a bit of grease in there. And a few people have told me, well one particular gentleman in the States, um, he's flown 500 hours and no signs of wear. So unless he doesn't use the rudder, it, um, obviously the engineers the designers know what they're talking about. Uh, I've got a little note up here. I'm going to fit the top skin, so this is where it gets a bit funky. Um, the dashboard skin, I'm going to fit over the cabin frame and sort of tie it up out of the way, and then put the firewall on, and the firewall will rest against there. Just makes it neater, I think. Um, the other option is to cut a slot in the skin so I can retrofit it later. But that's the fuselage. Um, chairs, all the seats, yeah, just fix up the back. Um, so anyone else who's doing it, don't mushroom head the rivets, just flatten them out as best you can. Or even better still, if I had my time again, I'd just, um, probably, especially those back, um, the back three there, just countersink those or flatten them out. I flatten them out, and like I said before, it's uh, working okay. Uh, what else we got going on? So I finished off the, these go top and bottom once the undercarriage, undercarriage will go up in here and these blocks, you got to be pretty careful with those holes because I could imagine um, like these scallops at each end, so I've left them fairly tight, it is rubber after all, so that's in there um, because you're likely to come back from a flight and they not they won't be there anymore, they'll just slide out. So fore and aft and left and right sort of movement, um, they'll lock in there. So I've got the four of those, uh, cut that on the scroll saw and then finish it off with the Dremel. So they're good to go, they're ready to go in. Wheels and brakes, undercarriage, nose gear, the other seat, the carbon, loving that stuff, that's great. And I just trial fitted the um, carbon at the back. So going along well. Thanks for watching, like I said, and see you in the next one.